Welcome, everybody. This is, of course, the U.S. Grace Force Podcast, but you knew that. You clicked on it, and we're happy that you did. I'm Doug Barry, along with my good friend, Father Richard Heilman, still, still in the U.S. Grace Force jersey. <laughs> yep. Four weeks now. I love and- this thing. <laughs> it's awesome. We're going to start marketing those, get them out there for everybody who wants one. We'll see. <laughs> Our guest tonight, good friend of ours, coming back. And before we get into introducing the amazing Bear Wozniak, we want to begin everything with prayer. So we turn that over to Father Heilman. Okay. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Thank you very much, Father. And thank you, everybody, for joining us and for being a part of the U.S. Grace Force. We can't thank you enough for everything that you do to help us, to support us, your prayers, your encouragement. When Father and I, again, we're out and about traveling, we hear people come up. People actually come to Father's parish from across the country, and they'll stop at his parish because they want to meet him, and they want to they be part of this, this Grace Force effort that we're trying to, by the grace of God, reach as many people as possible, especially in the times that we're in. Now, I also want to thank everybody out there who supports us financially. Amazing help, especially right now as things have gotten more challenging, more difficult. And so you can do that if you're interested by clicking the link in the description below, the Patreon link. That's a powerful way to help us out. A few dollars here or there, whatever you feel the Holy Spirit inspire you to do, whatever you'd like to give is always greatly appreciated. And you're always in our prayers. So thank you so much for that. But everybody, please just, you know, share this video with others, subscribe to this channel. Let's continue to grow and get this message out there to as many lives, souls as we possibly can. And the friend we're bringing on tonight, Mr. Bear Wozniak. Bear and I go back many years. Bear is uh, one of those guys that, I mean, his deep adventure ministry that he has is exactly that. He's a surfer. He is a, a biker, travels around. Uh, his uh, program at EWTN, Deep Adventures, is a fantastic program. I'm in an upcoming episode, I think, sooner or later. My first time ever surfing. Uh, bear taught me yeah again. oh yeah i'm sorry i jumped in there so. no that's fine yeah. i mean i i actually you said i did pretty decent which i'm You're one of the best i've ever taught yeah, yeah that was awesome you were good you were natural yeah well i think i broke a rib on the third or fourth run but uh when i fell it's on a, the i was a big water skier i didn't yeah. do serving but it was a big ah, water skier nice. back in the Same. day but you know nice. I, Doug, I checked after you fell you fell and cracked your rib i checked and the surfboard's okay. The reef didn't look too good after you hit it, but <laughs> the surfboard's all right. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of, actually. Did I crack the surfboard? Or did I, I break the ocean somehow? You know, yeah. when I... <laughs> I want to break the ocean. Well, Bear, good to have you on, man. I know we're, you're coming to us from Hawaii right now, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, it's been tough. I saw my father that it's been the toughest two and a half months of my life because I tore a, a muscle loose, my glute med loose when I was... Surfing my canoe, they call it huli. When you flip your canoe, it's called huli. It's like huli huli chicken, rotisserie style. Okay. So I huli my canoe, I ripped a muscle. So I've been watching the best surf of my whole, the best summer swells of my whole life. Not a day without epic good surf. Lots of epic surf. And 10 days ago, we had 30-foot swells right out in front of St. Augustine's Catholic Church here next to my house. Just in it. So it's been a horrible summer for oh. me because I haven't been able to surf. <laughs> Yeah, everybody watching right now who's not in Hawaii is really feeling for you. Yeah, it's just <laughs> tough just looking out the out your window at the ocean there. I'm looking at day. the ocean and now you got suffering for Jesus oh. in paradise. Yes. Suffering you're going through. <laughs> looking at the well, ocean. We're, we're happy that you're with us. Give us a quick rundown where things are with you. You still got your program in EWTN. You're, you're working yeah. on different projects. Well, there's a few things. Uh, well, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, the motorcycle TV show, is going into its fourth season soon. We're editing we've got actually three three seasons that we filmed in hawaii uh star one of them starring a few things with you uh surfing and then also uh when you were speaking at the men's conference here so that'll be coming out hopefully within the next several months um if people want to see long ride home with bear Wozniak, they want to power watch it they can go to deepadventure.com join the mama bears or the man cave and then you get access to all the secret youtube versions of those so you get those plus all of our early episodes like you get to see the episodes for before EWN air, airs them but and the other thing that we're doing is uh the bear school of manliness it's the man cave and the bear school of manliness 
and we have it's all based on cowboys by the way the whole the whole website is based on cowboys because uh nice i don't know we just need to see something different than knights i think and doug berry took the military theme so i mean what have i got left so <laughs> no, but so we have we have it's all based it's all it's all cowboy themed actually and i thought so you know we have 36 different rules so the men who join we all go together through that particular rule for that month like a three-year cycle like the catholic church likes to do so this month we're talking about having a personal creed and a personal code of rules to live by um and but and next month we'll all go through another one so whenever anybody joins they just join us where we are but the cool thing that's happening doug is now the men uh, are getting are going through the same curriculum with their sons and the curriculum is cool we've got uh, we have video, we have audio, we have like homilies from Father Bryce Lundgren, the the, the uh, Wyoming uh, cowboy priest who you have to have on your show. Uh, I have so I have so I have audio from Daniel DeBoom Markham who does the Cowboy Up two minute videos for my radio show, and we have written content and assessments. So it's very very rich, and something that I think men could take their 10, 12, 13 year old sons through all the way up until however, whatever age. But I was going to ask you, you know, your preparedness work that you do, mm -hmm. right? We have an area there that when we're developing called the, you know, for, for preparedness, we could just put, uh, you know, put a link, right? We would have our normal things, but then have a link right to your site so they could become participants in what you're doing. Okay. Nice. Now, yeah. you're, doing, you're, yeah. doing, you're doing preparedness and are you also doing fitness or I forget? Yeah, it's there's a touch of, of that in there. Yeah, it's but it's, it's, in there. It is, it's body, mind, soul. So it's it's physical preparedness, but it's also physical fitness, health. Because the stronger and healthier we are, the better prepared we are to handle anything that comes our way, and the better we are as instruments of God. Because we're thinking clearer, we're stronger, we have more energy. Father's a perfect example. Father has lost like what is it now? 67, 57? What is it now, Father? How um, much you lost? Just over sixty, I think, since January first. Yeah, wow. and, and you've been my inspiration, Doug, and I, everything that you're doing. Uh, I lifted weights this morning. Uh, I've been juicing all day. You know, mean green juice, right? Not and, just uh, us, not just I got, I got my Powerade. You know, so um, so we're going at it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So and, but, but, and uh, I do I do intermittent fasting, but I spiritualize it, right? So mm -hmm. I attach prayers to fasting. Uh, fasting gives the underdog the victory. I can't Amen. remember who said That's that, great. but. Amen. Yeah. So it detaches, it detaches you, you know, you, you don't, you're not attached to, it's not just food. You, you get stronger in being able to detach yourself from everything. And, right. and so well, uh, the secret to uh, weight loss is very simple. I have a bet with my friend, Pat Gervais, because I've been through all these medical issues. I mean, like cancer and winning that bet and then ripping a couple muscles loose. I don't know what's happening, but anyway, I gained some weight. And so he said, I'm going to bet. Well, let's have a bet who can lose the, who can get to our goal weight first. And I said, let's just bet every week. And whoever loses the most weight that week, um, the other person has to sing the song of that week that we choose. So like he has to sing stand by your man for me. And, put it on <laughs> uh, and it has to be in public at <laughs> Walmart or in front of a bar. So, but last week I had to sing girls who want to have fun, I, you know, so but that, if you want to lose weight, if you want super motivation, better friend. That, Competition. That yeah. Us so. men love it. <laughs> no, but I, I agree with you, Doug, fitness to witness, you know, if you're, <laughs> if people go, I need, I'm not very motivated. How I get motivated to lose weight. Well, wouldn't you like to, you know, live 15 to 20 years longer? Wouldn't you like to, you know, uh, for the sake of your children. And then of course, if you're not fit, you can't fulfill your mission. You know, you need you need strength and energy to fulfill your mission. So we'll have to connect our that, that area on, on preparedness. Sure. We'll do our little thing and then we'll just link it right to your site and they can join over there too. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I'd love to collaborate with you. That'd be fantastic. So yeah, so so we were talking uh beforehand and you were saying that you have a book coming out. I think you're gonna try to get it out before Lent, but it's the it, we ended up saying that'd be a cool title for the show. Where have all the cowboys gone? Yeah, and, that's it. You know, yeah. So it. Uh, and I love that you took. I never thought of cowboys because I've done I've done nights. And, I'm gonna go get my cowboy hat. I have yeah, one. right. I love cowboys. I grew up, you know, with the Lone Ranger and all that stuff. Yeah, and, me too. And, yeah, and you yeah. know, yeah, and you know, my my wife is a cowgirl. Really? So, yeah. So she, uh, uh, we were driving along Kalakala Avenue, going up by Diamond Head, and the song comes on the radio, and she says, "You're gonna love this song." And I turn. She turns it up, and it's this woman singing. 
you know, where's my John Wayne? Where's my happy ending? Where have all my, where have all the cowboys oh. gone? You know, he wow. said, you work hard, pay the bills. I'll raise the kids. I know it sounds corny, but women are desperate for men to be men again. And the world, yes. the, and you know, the cowboy, the whole cowboy. Okay. So here's the thing. I was growing, I was raised in the West, you know, and I know every nook of ground between California and the Dakotas, you know, I've been everywhere in there. And uh, I used to read Louis L'Amour Westerns. I don't know if any of you, if, if, if anybody here has not read Louis L'Amour Westerns, I strongly encourage you to get, start reading those books or give those books to your sons to read because it really shapes what manly virtue is. And Louis L'Amour was the great Western writer. He wrote over a hundred books. I have all of his leather, imitation leather bound books. But my first editor for my first book was his last editor. So I had this connection with Louis L'Amour. Think about Louis L'Amour Westerns is the cowboys there. They, they were all virtuous. There was no sex outside of marriage. It just was that, you know, and there were, and the women there were strong. He might've been the first man, the first author that really portrayed strong women. But that didn't mean that these women were from time to time vulnerable if a gang of bad guys was trying to take over a ranch or something. And mm -hmm. so this cowboy would always stand between the, uh, the, the strong but vulnerable woman and danger. And I was talking to Father Bryce Lundgren, who's a big uh, Louis L'Amour fan, and his brother is too. And he said, you know, his brother pointed out that um, in Louis L'Amour, there, the, there's always a woman and she's always a strong woman. And usually celibate, they usually uh, aren't married. You know, there's kind of a romance angle. Although Louis, Louis L'Amour forgets sometimes he has to wrap up the romance angle. But like in Gunsmoke, Matt Dillon protected Miss Kitty, but he was celibate. And so Father Bryce says, I, I'm like that. As a priest, I can run wild. If I have to go do something, I can go do it. I don't have to take care of my family. And yet still, there was this woman that he protected in Miss Kitty. So, mm. yeah, the, the Western cowboy uh, has so much to teach us. And, of course, as, as bikers, that feeling of riding that iron horse, so many of the signals that we use when we ride in a pack are, are like when the cavalry rides together. And so there is that kind of feeling. In one of our episodes of Long Ride Home, we show thoroughbred horses running with, uh, you know, drone flying so low with them. And then we see my friend, uh, Tom Equals, Archbishop Wenske's good friend, uh, we're harnessing up our horses and then you see us harnessing up our, our motorcycles and riding. So yeah, I think there's so much to be learned by, cow by, by the cowboy uh, code. And there is a cowboy yeah. code. That and was something been... that was so attractive when we were watching those cowboy movies yeah. or television shows back then. They were perfect gentlemen, you know, and they took care of people. And then, <laughs> and then when they saw a need, they took care of it. They were off on their horse to do it. They were heroes, Wait, no. you know, yeah, they were heroic. And I want to say too, that, uh, I I've been, I, I, like you guys, I've been into men's ministry for gosh, almost my whole priesthood. But I remember doing these men's evenings and some people wondered, uh, you know, are the ladies going to, you know, object because, you know, you're leaving the family. They were pushing the men out the door. Right. <laughs> go, right. go. I want, I want my men, man to be strong. I want to be holy. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and to, to, to get together with other men who want that too. So well, the whole um, thing is, you're right. <laughs> women want this right now. To be a gentleman, John Wayne said it so well, I forget which movie it was in, but he said, to be a gentleman, you first have to be a man. Right. You know, so, uh, so the, 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 this, this prissy gentlemanly sort of metrosexual nice yeah. guy next door isn't hacking it with the women. When we go out and speak, when I go speak, my wife is, you know, usually with me, unless it's just a men's conference, if there's just men. But we'll get surrounded by women of every age, from teenagers up to as old as they can get. And they're saying, we need our men to be men again. You got to yeah. tell our men we want men, not stop apologizing for your existence. Yeah, ma and ma then what, mas toxic masculinity. Yeah, yeah I, it's like, I don't, people say, Bear talks about, about, masculine spirituality i go no i don't i just talk about manliness mm, yep. masculinity is a word that's been co-opted also you know how satan likes yeah, i know but i but so challenging yeah. i love what you guys do because you don't give them a, a watered down version of the gospel mm. you give them the catechism the, the meat of it the truth of it and the challenge of it and men young men 
are looking for a challenge. They respond to that challenge. Yeah, so agree. Yeah, another one of my favorite quotes from John Wayne, life is hard, but it's harder when you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you telling me that, Doug? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I, not, nothing, no, nothing personal to anybody here on, on the set. No, but I, it's funny because even that, the right. simplicity and clarity of that, there's no, there's no grandiose sort of philosophical this and that. It's like, you know, just, you know, smarten up and get on with it. But there's something about the whole cowboy mentality when you see in some of these Westerns. You got the good guys and the bad guys. You got that real clear delineation between good and evil. But you see grit. There's a certain mm. toughness that they're not afraid to take a hard, a hard challenge on. And right now we've got a real uh, problem with the uh, feminization that's going on. Um, and this has got nothing to do with true femininity. Uh, but right. even, even Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas talked about this, about the importance of, of not, not running from the arduous task. Okay, that, that, that effeminization, that, that wussification is when something is challenging and difficult in front of you, running from it and looking for the easier way. That doesn't mean we're, you know don't work smart. That means when something is a challenge that needs to be addressed, there are a lot of guys that will just bail. They just, they bail. And, and instead of stepping into the conflict, they'll pull out their phone and the video of the conflict and then post it online. Oh God. That's and you, and you, that's, you literally yeah. see this happen in subways yeah. or on the street. A woman yeah. could be being beaten up. And there are men who will walk right by it because they don't want to get involved. And instead, yeah. some will just pull out their phone and they'll just video the thing. I mean, th this kind of stuff is, it, it's, it's despicable. But, you know, that, that sense of grit and toughness that isn't afraid to risk for the sake of what's good, for the sake of defending what is good, holy, and true. Well, we need for, you know, in Hawaii, we have a very, my wife says it's just a, a very shocking to her in Hawaii she's never seen it before and she's from florida she's a cowgirl by the way she was a barrel racer and a and a trick rider but she said in hawaii there's a community of men the men are together and it maybe it's because of the water because we surf we sail we spear fish we canoe the water is also the great equalizer we don't care if you're a lawyer or what you do if you're a waterman, you're a waterman. But in Hawaii, when I walk along the when I walk along the beach, the younger men call me uncle, mm. uncle bear, and 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 it's a real true thing that we we uncle these younger men. I remember during the first world title here, a young man was upset with his tandem surfing partner and acted out against her. And from the podium, I sanctioned him right from the podium. I said he's banned from surfing for the next year and the the next the the, the 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 noble great surfers that were out there are head lifeguard brian kialana from oahu and the head lifeguard archie kalepa was out there and they came and took that girl off the board from him and the uncle schooled him you're you're you are you are not going to surf tandem not just competition nothing for a year but a year later when he came back i went and sought him out and i said okay it's been a year are you ready to surf again but it's kind of like John Wayne said, every guy deserves a second, every man deserves a second chance yeah. by, keep, by keep an eye on him. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we school them, we uncle them, we help them, we give them advice. And right now, men out there, there are so many young men and boys that have been, that, that have been, uh, you know, abandoned by their dads, either because he's a workaholic, alcoholic, or just flat out left the house or their mother's been betrayed by a man. And we need men to not just be good dads. We need our men to be uncles too. Yep. To, you, know, you, know what I, you know what I say several times every day? I said it last night. We're out on the, on the, the pier here. And I was talking to a young man and he was talking. He's, maybe he's in his late 40s, actually, not that young, or late 30s. And he had a young daughter with him. And I saw him talking with her and teaching her. I said, you had a really, really sweet daughter there. And I said, I'm so proud of you. And I looked at her and said, you have a very good father. And I, you, I say to men all through the day, when I see something good they're doing, I'm proud of you. Even a 70-year-old man needs someone to say, I'm proud of you. Yeah. So we need as men need not to just be good dads. We have a calling on us to be good uncles too. Yeah. You know, I went, when you told the story about sanctioning that man for a year, uh, I, I, right away I'm going, what a great dad or a great uncle. 
you know, but, but what a manly thing to do. And I, and I truly believe that's what God does too. I mean, God wants us home. He wants us happy. He wants us to celebrate life. Uh, but if we're going off in a wrong way and, you know, we're doing something that's, that's, uh, you know, destructive, like he was doing uh, with his partner, uh, you know, he's going to let us have it. And, and that's what a good dad does. Uh, and so it's an, it, it's a wake up time for us it, yeah. when, when uh, men step up and sanction their kids or, you know, their ne ne niece or ne nephews, but, but it's, it's, uh, it's an act of love. It truly is. Well, I'll and, and, and look at what's going on in the culture right now. I mean, yeah. everybody's afraid to do that very thing. And so as a result, you know, temper tantrums, for instance, they're working. You know, yeah. that 2020, <laughs> the streets on fire was one big temper tantrum. Yeah. And, and, and it was working because nobody wanted to sanction them. Nobody wanted to call them out. Are we, we, what are you letting all these criminals out of jail, you know, with, with, you know, and, and not getting punished for, for crimes they're walking into jewelry stores and just having whatever they want. Yeah. I mean, it, it's yeah, just, we, it's, there's we, a, there's a lack of manliness, you know, and, and it is, it's, it's a wussification. It's, it's, uh, that's, that's happened where everybody just wants to step back and they don't want to offend anybody and they don't want to get involved. And, you, and, and, and I, I, well, I'll end with this though. I've been using this, uh, image, uh, recently, but I, I think it fits in this context. I said, you know, I'm a shepherd. I'm a priest. I'm a father. I'm a dad. Yeah. You know, I'm a father. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm a shepherd. So let's let's imagine I'm a real shepherd, and I'm there's the pasture, and there's the sheep, and the wolf comes over and starts eating uh, one of the sheep. I stand on the sidelines and just go, "Geez, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to make the wolf mad. I don't want you know there to be division or you know whatever they're they're using to just check out from being a man." And uh, being a being a strong shepherd, and, and it's, just, it's a tough time. There's there's two things that come to my mind. One is uh, a month ago I was golfing in a golf tournament. My son Jeremiah was was golfing in it too, and there were two young men I would say in their early 30s, and they were listening to the worst kind of rap. You know, just that terrible yeah. demeans women and vulgarity and, and what a yeah. great plug I am. And I, as an uncle, I just I didn't accuse a man of anything. I just said. Does, do you ever think, do you, does it ever worry you that that might be uh, troubling your soul? Does it have any effect on your soul to listen to it? And they go, well, no. And so that was good. And I said, and, and that was it. But I just asked them a question, asking them a question, right? It's a good thing to do. Do you think that that harms your soul, does harm to your soul? I bet they thought about it the next day. But I'll tell you another time. I went, I was having a tough time with one of, one of my sons. And uh, I, I would walk down to Waikiki. And there's my friend, Lance O'Connor. He's a world champion surfer. And I'm just saying, oh, my son, you know, just, you know, talking bad to me. Six months later, my son calls me from the North Shore of Banzai Pipeline, which is a gnarly, 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 gnarly place to surf. And he goes, Dad, you got to call Lance. He just told me to get out of the water. And I go, why? He's, he's, he, when he saw me, he said, you get out of the water. You don't, you don't t t talk to your dad like that. And he sent my 30-year-old son in from the, from, the, from the beach, you know. And then I talked to Lance and made everything all good. And then he, then he, you know, loved on my son. But that that uncleing needs to happen again. Yep. We, we need to step in and affirm, but also say you don't get to do that. Yep. You know what? I, I we love were, the we were uncleing thing. We were in a restaurant the other day, and this guy just dropping f bombs, peacocking, as my wife says. We were at we were at the the Delta Sky Lounge is where it was, and I just I just looked over at him. And I didn't think about the fact he was so he was twice as big as me, but I said, excuse me, there's a lady present. Nice. So I think we need to do that. It doesn't yes. have to be big, braggadocious things, but we right. need to be men and we need to be uncles. So, yeah. I love the uncle thing. Yeah. 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 In your book, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? You break that down a little bit. You've got like several key points I think you're, you're trying to make in this book. Do you want to talk about that? Well, yeah, sure. It isn't out yet. My Deep Adventure book and my... A Surfing Guide to the Soul just got republished by Sophia, so they're out. But okay. um, yeah, we'll have, this, we'll have uh, this, links. To, I'm sorry, everybody, just check out the links in the description below on the thank you, Doug, on thank the video you. here. Yeah, and you'll be able to you'll yeah. find links to those books. So we're working on good this, stuff, this everybody. Really yeah. good. Good. Where have all the cowboys gone? Twelve rules of manliness, part one, and then there'll be twelve more rules of manliness because there's going to be we're going to do at least twenty four. But Father, you were talking about you know, the Lone Ranger and Roy Rogers. And right. you know, Roy Rogers had his code. Gene Autry had his code. 
but the cowboys actually have a they always will say um hey that's not that's not living by the cowboy code you'll hear that statement from them even though it's not like formally written down some people have tried to write those down and so um if you if you know if you meet here's the thing about cowboys they have a lot of solitude in their lives even when they're out riding and they're riding together herding cattle they're alone. Like when surfers go out, especially on bigger days, there may be a lot of other surfers out there, but we're alone for two hours surfing. We're not talking with each, each other. I think one of the one of the roots of the cowboy uh, virtue is that they have solitude in that saddle. All they hear is the creaking of the saddle, and you know, is you know, a brush against their chaps, and maybe a breeze and a metal arc or something. But they have time, and so one of the key virtues of any man is he must find a place of prayer and a place of solitude. The, I don't know if you can see, there's a kind of a leathery chair right over there. Okay. That's my, that's my prayer chair. Nice. In the morning I get up, I open up my window. I can hear the minor birds singing. I hear the ocean mm -hmm. and that's my liturgy hour. That's where I started, you know, nice. every morning. So men, that's my moment of solitude, but every man needs to find a way where he can carve out 20 minutes every day or an, an hour once a week where he can just be alone with the Lord, with his thoughts, reading a good book is a great way to have a dialogue with Jesus yep. and, uh, and, 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 and have that time of introspection. And I think that's one of the things about the Cowboys is they've got plenty of time to sort it out. There's sometimes an old man will feel messed up. Like someone wrote to me two days ago, he goes, pray for me. I'm angry. I don't know why, but I'm angry. Well, maybe he's angry for a reason and he just needs to have time to just guys have feelings that they don't know where they come from. And you have to go, I'm having this feeling of feeling shameful, like I'm ashamed or like I'm not confident or that I'm not good enough. Where is that coming from? If you live that exam in life as Catholics are taught to do, that has time to filter to the surface. But if you're not spending time alone, you know, I used to walk 50 miles every week on the beach. Now I go out and I stand at paddle surf instead. But you need time alone with the Lord, but also just being quiet. And, and one of the ways people struggle with is when they will try to be quiet is they get bombarded and so i've just learned as a benedictine oblate to just pray jesus just keep just say his name when you're when you're right. alone right. And, and 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 that keeps you and i of course i have my jesus beads i'm wearing them the ancient early church fathers used to have these ropes with yep. beads, you know knotted and so it gives me that kinesthetic remembering okay i'm praying now yeah i'm on my surfboard but i'm praying now and just say I, jesus name and, they, and that solitude will give you clarity yeah, I've been advocating that solitude quite a bit uh, this sure. year. Actually, I, I actually uh, led people through what I called ninety days to peace. You mm -hmm. know, is is that the closer we get to God, the more we experience that peace in our lives. And uh, I'm going to hold up the the journal that we put together to help people with that. But uh, it's called peace. I'll put it on strength. my. Yeah, it's called peace through strength, and it's just I'll put it on my you, website. You, yeah, and you, you put you, you uh, just. Take 90 days. They say it takes 21 days to develop a habit, 90 days to get entrenched. But anyways, uh, the, the point is, is that we need more of that, uh, Bear, because, um, you know, you have your prayer chair. I, I, I have a prayer chair, too. Um, and uh, but but, you know, we talk about man caves. And that's mm -hmm. great. And I love man caves. Can I, can but, I just I, I'm sorry. I just need to interrupt real quick on this prayer chair thing. I don't have a prayer chair. <laughs> I have a board with broken glass and gravel <laughs> glued to it that's what i kneel on when i pray you guys can yeah, sit after you put your hair chairs. shirt on right what was that yeah. yeah after you put your hair shirt on of course that's yeah, it. i put on my hair chair and his, his, his camel yeah. hair yeah, yeah that's it i put on the yeah. hair shirt i kneel on my my kneeler with broken glass and yep. gravel glued yeah. to it but go ahead guys <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead with your nice, cozy prayer chair. That's I just okay. wanted to say that. Go right That's ahead. Okay for you rookies, this is a nice, soft, comfortable, stressless chair. <laughs> <laughs> no, but where I was going with it, thanks for interrupting, Doug. But where I, I was going with it is, is um, you know, I, and guys will say, well, you know, the kids, or I got to do this, I got to, you know, I always tell people, and I'll, I'm, right now I'm talking to big families, but, um, and I come from a big family. But you, you might say, hey, can you watch the kids? Because I'm going to go down to the drugstore or whatever. And, uh, and so you do. Hey, honey, I'm going to go to my prayer space. And I, I really advocate that people have some kind of prayer space. It could be the corner of your bedroom. You know, go upstairs in the corner of your bedroom and just spend some time. Uh, you might still hear the kids squealing in the background, but uh, 
But anyways, you know, try to do that so that you get the quiet time is so important because um, and we just had the readings uh, of, of Martha and Mary where um, Jesus is right there in the living room and, 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 uh, and Martha's doing something great. I mean, we got a guess, we got to get some hors d'oeuvres and a drink for him, hospitality. But Martha says, no, this is the son of God. I got to stop. I got to stop. You know, even, even the mission, because I'm not going to know the missions or I'm not going to do the mission well, unless I stop and I, I get connected. I, I, I fall deeper in love and I listen, I listen. Yeah. One we of the got best to places. cultivate our listening skills yeah. with our Lord. And once you do that, you know, you mentioned uh, the uh, uh, Office of Readings. Uh, of course, as a priest, I'm, I'm obliged to do that. But I'm in the middle of those so psalms. And, I, and, and, and all of a sudden, I'm just getting bombarded with, wait, Lord, I got to get a pen. I got to get a pen. You know, so, uh, and that's really the what Lord the journal is all about, too. The Lord speaking to you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and you know it is because... It's just awesome. Uh, I think it's but, key, Father, that that men uh, know how to have a good cigar. Yep. And a shot of whiskey. I mean, a lot of my prayer, not as much now, but a lot of my prayer is an iPad and a shot of whiskey and a cigar out outside on the deck or down for That's me. That's nice. I mean, I, I, I you're I, stopping. You know, a cigar is a fifty-minute yep smoke, and then a good old GK Chesterton is right there with me. You know, he said. Uh, the pipe, uh, what is it? I forget the the pipe, the Bible, and the and the pint. Yeah, go well together. I really think we actually man, we actually uh, get together with with guys and we call it pipes and pints because these are go. a lot of young guys and they they don't smoke it every day. They just ever, for occasions they'll, they'll I just bring think the pipe it's good out. For men to, to be manly, you can go out yep. on your deck, have a cigar, yep. take out your iPad, you know, or or bring a book and 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 pray. But but I for me my a lot of my prayers just dialoguing with the Lord, reading it, That's reading, it. praying. But reading a book, it, uh, that and the reading kind of gets the thing, the motion. It brings me into know? conversation with the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be reading Aquinas, or it's the wheels turning, craved, or or it might be yeah. reading, uh, um, you know, another another good book that's been written by the by the Lord, but it, by, you know, led by the Holy Spirit to be written by by good old people like us. But yeah. um, I think it's good to like lots of time, lots of time. I have a beautiful book here on the primitive church. I have all the early church fathers. But I also have uh, books by you, by you know, by pe people of our generation too. But I think if you if you sit down and you read the liturgy of the hour, you spend time having that cigar and a shot of whiskey goes far in uh, in, in the kinesthetic feeling. As a martial artist, I know ken the kinesthetic way I learned having the G Jesus beats, having the exorcism prayer rosary, or or having a cigar. I'm sorry, I'm comparing them. Holding that cigar reminds me that I'm here to prayer and to have a dialogue with the Lord. Very manly. <laughs> Bear, tell when it comes to um, these the rules and regulations of your book, maybe not regulations, but these twelve yeah. points, these key points, and you say that there really are twenty four. So you've got you've got a second part, a second book working on then after you get this one done. Is that the point? I'm writing. I'm writing them all. I write them all at the same time, and now I'm sifting. You know, when I write, I just there's a stream of consciousness, and I don't try to hold back or make it all pretty. And then I go back and I, I I'm fine tuning, but in all the all the materials with your I cigar and your whiskey. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I but, think that's great. You two are, are very equally kind of uh, joined at that idea that that when you pray, God inspires you, and you pull out the iPad and you're writing books and you're writing, you know, you're all sorts of things. When I get inspired by God, I get a sticky note. That's about the extent <laughs> of <laughs> of what I'm getting. Is I by get sticky my blue notebooks out. <laughs> So this I have is the in basket here. My, little stick, my sticky note my dispenser notes. right here. <laughs> I to get a sticky notes, and this is this is my in basket. Like next time I'm going to do a big adventure. That's part of one of the one of my rules is don't be a drifter. You know, have goals. Yeah, and this thing only has a little bit of space for for the you know expected. But get that's home perfect. when you're when you're so no, but, but that's little thoughts, perfect. you know. Yeah. yeah, but when you get that thought done, then it all of a sudden becomes an adventure. When right, start, right, right. You pull out the blue notebook and. On this side, this one here says sailing because I'm thinking about doing a series, a, a TV adventure sa sailing thing. But you know, I, nice. I get a blue notebook out, and then all of a sudden, every time I have a sticky note, I just or thought I scribble it and put it in the front sleeve. Nice. And when I start making plans, it gets printed out and goes there. And then the action items I have to do are in the back sleeve. And next thing you know, I pedal my bicycle across the United States, or I've, you know, gone for the world title in surfing or something. But it all it all starts with a journal like that. 
father yep. could always have my yep. leather kennels that are blank. And then it becomes one of these. Yep. Well, so, I, you know, Bear, one of the things I think you're doing here that I think is so important for, especially for men, I mean, women too, but, but men in particular is, is when you get in those moments, when you're, you're in prayer, you be ready to listen and then be ready to act. Yes. And as you've both said, you know, you've got to, sometimes you've just got to write these things down and you're giving very practical ideas, whether you're surfing, you're sitting with a cigar, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, on your lawn furniture in the back patio, whatever you're doing is playing, you're croquet, ready, with playing, croquet, with playing croquet with Doug, playing croquet with Doug, playing croquet. <laughs> no, but there, there's a scripture verse in Habakkuk. I think I forget the verse exactly. It's, I've lived by it my whole life. My it, it, it says, um, "Write the vision down in words that are big enough so the one who is reading it can run while they are reading. And if the vision tarries, wait for it, for it will surely come." And I know that there are people. The Holy Spirit has this way of giving you a gentle nudge. Yep. You go, oh, what was that? And then yeah. it's gone. But yeah, that's why I say get, I gotta get a pen before it's gone. <laughs> if you have that journal, it. it my dad said, t writing, taking a a, a, a a a dream like that and writing it down, then it becomes a goal. Yep. And then the Lord begins to fill out that vision, and the whole thing. The runner in those days, they were saying, write this down now. Go run from village to village to give the give the message to the all the little villages and all everyone in the fields. Write the vision. You know what? It's kind of funny because right now I just kind of mentioned I'm working on possibly a series, a sailing adventure series next. Well, now I've now I've publicly spoken it out, you know, and so it, now I have a little bit of maybe um, more reason to to focus in on it more. But write your vision down with clarity. Let not write your vision down and listen to the Holy Spirit. Right. And let him. My dad used to say. You write in pencil, God writes in ink. So, you know, erase it, get ready to change it. But, but so many people have a nudge from the Holy Spirit and, 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 and they don't even know that's what it is. Right. So and, this is a, that, and, yeah. and this is a manly thing to do. You know, I think over the years, we, uh, we, I don't know, whatever movement it feminized the faith. And that's why, too, I do the combat rosary and, and we have like military themes and all that because this is a manly thing to do, uh, to... To, to sit down with dad, you know, that's what I've been calling Abba Father these days. I've been calling him dad. Awesome. Yeah, and, and dad, what do you want me to do? Because I'm here, I want to do it, and uh, I'm, I'm with you, and I just want to please you, and, and let's get this mission done. But it's kind of in that tone that I'm doing right now, you know, because I, I do see the God the Father is perfectly masculine, and, and uh and sometimes he lets you have it, and and he should. And then all of a sudden, you know, you can change to the right direction again. Um, and but but all of that is is uh, is manly. It, is it? It's not a feminine thing to pray. Well, the, the, this whole know? thing about feminization of the church, it didn't happen to the church because it's because men. It's 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 our fault. It's not the yeah. women's fault. It's our fault. Yeah. We let it happen. We're not yeah. victims. We just created a vacuum and someone had to fill it, you know? And yep. I have to say that the, so much of what the women are doing is, is so awesome. It is awesome, but but we, we men, let it happen. But men need to have their roles too. And you know, it, yeah. And it, it starts with the whole 60s. When the pill came out, uh, we fell back into, uh, as Thomas Aquinas said, you know, I think his, his definition of a effeminate man was someone that seeks pleasure. And right. it turned, boys never had to become men because they didn't have to take on the responsibility of fatherhood the minute. Yeah, they reverted to their brute nature. You know, they're just animals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, like it was the women who tamed the West, right? But but the boys continued to be boys into their 50s, 60s, and 70s because yeah. they could have sex with whoever they want. But then it got portrayed uh, with, with, uh, that being an animal is what masculinity is all about. No, that's, that's what, called being a boy. Yeah, hmm. right. As Aquinas called it being effeminate. If all yeah. you're seeking is pleasure, yeah, you won't ever find any fulfillment. You're just gonna yeah. keep empty. It's uh, you're just gonna keep, you know, feeding yourself air. You're just gonna feed yourself more and more emptiness. The, the, fulfillment is when you marry uh, uh, Kuliana with love, right? Responsibility with love, as Jean Paul II said, love and responsibility. And Aquinas said, love is seeking the true good for the other, willing the true good for the other. Right. And Jean Paul II said through self-donation. So. 
that's what gives a man fulfillment. Every right. man knows he's called to be a hero. Yep. To be yeah. a hero, not yeah. an animal, be a hero. Exactly. Yeah. But and unfortunately, there's a lot of guys out there right now who don't care anymore about that sort of thing, which I think is much more part of the diabolical disorientation that our world's going through, where this kind of stuff is just many are running quickly down this road. However, I say that knowing that just as every single human body is made up of about 75% water and every single human body needs to be hydrated, every single body has about three days. If you don't have water, you'll die. We're all built the same way physically. We are also built the same way spiritually. That interior needs to have holy purpose, needs to have a holy mission of some sort. And a man without a mission, a person without a mission is lost. Uh, and that's why a book like this, it sounds like Bear, it can really help that be found because we are, we are built that way. So even the ones who don't care and they, I just want to party my way into oblivion. It's like, yeah, but that's not what you're ultimately made for. That's not what you're built for. That's not how you were built. You can't choose to say that you're built a different way when no. God made you to be with him somehow on, well, not somehow in this deep encounter on this level. Okay. Other, what are some other prominent without maybe hitting them all because the sake of time here, we want people to read the book. But what are some of the prominent points in this book that you want to bring out that you would really want to get out to people to help them? Well, we've talked about uh, how you treat women. I think how a man treats a woman defines him. How he treats a woman, children, and animals, things weaker than him, really defines him. I think that's one, one thing is the, the whole, this men have just abdicated their whole role of love and responsibility. It's, it's, it's not like, it's not love, it's called lust. You know, I can't wait. It's not, I can't wait to give, it's I can't wait to get. And so the whole... The, the door opening with with um, uh, back you know with Humana Vitae, when the door opened with pill with abortion um, it, it allowed boys not to be not to have to grow into their manhood I at the age of 23 I had my first child I was a virgin on the night I was married I don't think that's a very common thing anymore and it, having that kuleana that type of responsibility causes a man to grow up so boys are on the sideline and they're comfortable uh, because they've got their pornography, they don't. They see it as a victimless crime. But when we carried our cross down a, down to the area to the brothels in Houston, when we were on long ride home, and we stopped and prayed in front of the brothels, um, you know, which is also you know, brothels were also the place where abortions were in the old west. Um, when we stopped and prayed there, at one point, a woman opened the door and stuck her head out and looked at us like. Like she was so glad to see us. And then you could see she got pulled back in and the enforcers showed up in their Jeep and in their big kind of big old Lincoln type car. And, <clears throat> and you, when you, when you see that, you realize those women are being victim prostituted and they're being, they're, they're being forced into pornography and the sex slave. There is no victimless, there is no victimless thing when you're watching pornography and it, it, it just kind of ruins men's souls mm -hmm. and, and their capacity to give and to love. And so they men need to deal with pornography. They need to make it. They need to uh, start treating women with respect. And I'll tell you, young men, the woman you need to respect right now is maybe you're not dating anybody. But for me, when I was a young man, I was faithful to my wife, even though I hadn't met her yet. I prayed for her, even though I hadn't met her yet. I was faithful to her, even in my relationships with other with other women that I was dating, say. Men need to men need to just start treating women with dignity, and women need to start holding to that social contract they used to have. As I'm not going to have sex outside of marriage. So, so the so I would say one of the rules of manliness is how you treat women, how you treat children, how you treat animals, and those weaker than you pretty much defines who you are. Yep. It's not like your golf score, your bank account. I love that that line in Fight Club. You're not what is it? You're not the contents of your wallet. You're not your bank account. You're not your job. You know, it's how you you can define yourself pretty well by how you treat, yeah. how you give dignity to those weaker than you. I I hate pornography, and and uh, I, I know a lot of guys are uh, get addicted to it almost. But uh, uh, but you're right. I mean, the, the the first of all, the way that the prostitutes are treated, like just 
dirt like animals uh, mm -hmm. begin with that. But but what it is is it's pu pulling us all down. It, you know, once we once we normalize pornography, where are we? I mean, we are just a, like out in the woods is is part of the animals it, is all it is. Where's the dignity? And the other thing I tell men too is that I think pornography went a long way with to to do this to them, but. If they notice a pretty woman, I think they've gotten to a point where they think that's dirty to, to notice a pretty woman, you know, because I'm, I'm entering into, you know, my pornographic stage, you know, and I always, I always counsel men. I said, the, the greatest creature God has ever created is woman. I mean, she's more beautiful than, a than a, the waves you're looking out your window and the uh, sunset and the mountain range. I mean. Praise God, but do it in a split second, you know, don't, don't, you know, go beyond yeah. that. But, but, uh, you know, pray, aren't we grateful for the wonderful gifts of God and, and woman, you know, I mean, she's the tabernacle of new life. I mean, you know, see it that way. And it's, that's, that's why the I, that's of the I, saying I hate pornography because it took that away. You talk about cowboys. They knew this. They knew women were, were they're sacred. You know, mm -hmm. we should revere women. Uh, they knew that and they treated them that way. And I, and that's what I think we've lost, uh, especially through pornography. It, what do you think about no, that, Bear? But you're right. When we walk along the beach here, I'm telling you, Hawaii is full of, you live in the water, you know, people are athletic. They're, the human body. Yeah, human yeah. Body, the physically the body, fat people all around you. The human body here in Hawaii looks like what a human body is kind of supposed to look like, yeah. I think. And I will, we will comment as we walk. Look at how beautiful that form is. You know, it may be a woman, it might be a man, but it's like, sure. that's just beautiful. It makes me feel good inside. Like that, like I want to, you know, I don't know. It makes me feel clean and pure Yeah, because I'm seeing the human body. But John Paul too said that the problem with pornography isn't that it shows too much because it shows too little. All you're showing is you're making them an, uh, uh, an object, object as opposed to a subject of love. Yep. And so to see to see the human form in, in its beauty, like there's this, there's the, these girls that surf out of, at Queens Beach right in front of my house where Queen Lilio Kalani surfed. And if you could see them crossed up to the nose on a longboard and perch 10 toes on the nose while three or four feet over the wave, a beautiful right. trim on the board and beautiful trim human body, it's beautiful to see. Yep. Yep. But if, you, if you've been living in that twisted little world of pornography, yep. which all pornography is, 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 is is uh, Dante's inward downward, downward spiral yeah. into hell because it's all into yourself. And right now, Doug, as you open the conversation, this whole thing about cancel culture and, and I identify as this and I identify as that. Well, the identity as Catholics is that we're made in God's image. That's our identity. And when you when you when you say, well, I identify as this, and you better re use my pronouns or whatever else you say. It is true that personal autonomy is very important. Who I am myself is very important. Personal time is very important. But it's important because then I can give a gift of myself to others. It's not because this is what I am and you can't have any and you better not try to step on me. You can't take anything from me, you know. It's whole, totally flipped upside down. Yeah. Personal autonomy and our dignity isn't because, isn't, you know, the Catholic Church doesn't call people homosexuals. In the catechism, it says people with same-sex attraction. Right, Who are right. you? You're made in God's image. That's your That's dignity. That's who you love are. Love the sinner, hate the sin. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Yeah. Bear, when you do you, do you speak much publicly? Are you conferences or parish missions? Do you give many talks on this? Like you're doing oh, yeah. this? Every chance, every chance I get, I go out. I never I never say no. And normally I am a, a lot of times, I hate to say this out loud, but it's in the middle of winter in Lake Erie when I go up to speak someplace yeah. in march <laughs> yeah, i'm leaving no but I, I we love to get out like as i know you do too and uh and love to be with them you know what we normally do when i go out to speak to a men's event uh i, I always say let's have a normally they're on a saturday right they have a saturday morning or right. saturday i right. uh, said so let's have a cigar night the night before nice and that's where all the good stuff happens right we, whiskey cigars um and uh I remember the, I proposed that for Boise, Idaho, when we went to go speak at their, you know, their um, radio rally, gala. And I said, let's have a men's night the night before. 80 men showed up. They packed out the cigar place. 
that's how hungry men are. It wasn't a men's event. It, it was a, for everyone. But I, yeah, so when I go speak, I usually like to have a cigar uh, evening the night before. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I wonder, would you would you pack it out if it was in a weight room and we were going to have a workout night? Let's get all the guys together. We're going to work out. We're gonna, you know, that'd be so cool. I, 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 would, I think that's so cool. You know, we had a, our first, here's funny, the first men's conference that we had here, and I know you've come and spoken here, but I helped organize the first men's conference here and I was supposed to speak at it. And then I got invited to Hawaii Five-0 to be a guest star on, their, on, the, on, a, on an episode. So I didn't even go to the conference I helped organize. But at our first conference, we said, well, all these macho Filipinos, they're not going to want to come. So what we did is we taught them the martial art. I, 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 it was actually the event leading up to the big men's conference. And I used to be, why well, I guess I'm licensed to teach a screamer, you know, stick yeah. fighting, you know, the circular. And so we gave them all bamboo sticks, taught them how to hit each other, you know. So I think the weight room is a great place to have a, you know, a, I think it's a great place to have a, 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 a men's night, as long as it's a Rocky Balboa sort of gym. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, we're going to talk about next week as well is uh and i highly recommend this we call it the holy league or the whole uh yes uh, night of nights mm -hmm. and yes. the, the format is super simple i expose the blessed sacrament and uh you know we do it the traditional way that's the one thing too that people have to understand is uh eucharistic adoration is the same as it was in 1940 you know that that didn't change with any of the liturgical changes it's just beautiful but then we we kind of add a little bit more to it like we put in uh floor standing candelabras and we have the uh we have a men's scola that and they do uh, it, it's, it's unbelievable but they do sacred hymns and uh in four-part harmony I mean, it's just it's unbelievable really and then i'm i'm in the confessional while they're, they're in adoration so it's the knights or the cowboys kneeling before their king right and you're not asked to like uh unload and share your feelings or anything like that which isn't real comfortable for a lot of men uh, but we got to work on them to to help them to to do that because we want to be want to be brothers and and work. But then after it's all after that time in church, just an hour, a holy hour, then we have this uh, this fraternal social and and the bond and you know the sense of having each other's backs and being each other's battle buddy and all this stuff uh, really uh, solidifies during that time. And that's all. That's that's the format. It's just and, and, and oh, and we have we have a speaker, and we usually limited to about twenty minutes. But you know, on a topic like we're talking about tonight with men, and this is where I was saying too. I started this back in two thousand seven, I think, and um, and and people wondered, you know, the ladies, you're leaving me home with the kids, and is that going to be an issue? No, no, no. The women were shoving the men out the door. You got to go to this because. I want my man to be a strong, masculine, spiritual father to you know in our family here, and it's it's gone a long way. And then from that went uh, we we get together another night and have pipes and pints and, and as a rectory too. So, there but uh, it's something that I really recommend for people. You know, it, again, it's a, such a simple format, and uh, so we're going to be talking more about that next week. But I wanted to bring that up in the context of what men can do. You know, what what can we do? And yeah. uh, I. I, I Go ahead. Gathering of men, and then have breakfast with these. Get a group of six, seven, eight, nine guys, and have breakfast once every two weeks, or or have a cigar night every every. Yeah, that yeah, week. that's what this basically rotate is. Yeah. What, but rotate. You need that smaller group too. We have on Wednesday night. We're gonna have cigar night here at my house. Nice. They come more for my wife's hors d'oeuvres and the cigars. <laughs> we, we sit here and we lie about our, about we just lie about how great we used to be and stuff like that. <laughs> nice. have to talk, and we talk about the Lord. We might talk about politics whatever but but it's it's men just getting to open up and really get to know each other and bond you know yeah so, so i get it can i give you one of my other rules doug yeah please do this is the point i know you're gonna like one is is this word try doesn't get it done mm, right. you know when i was training uh, you know martial arts i doug knows i got uh, two ninja black belts and, and other martial arts like doug a lot of other things but in our dojo the word try wasn't allowed to be said mm. You either commit to doing it and you do it come a hell or high water. Yeah. That's the cowboy way. I right? usually quote Yoda, do or <laughs> well, do not. Yeah. There is no try. <laughs> yes. The, the word, and we also never use the word problem. We just use the word. If someone came and said, I got a problem, we'd say, it's a sign of weakness, really, to say, but to say, I've got a challenge. That's exactly. something that wants to arise to. 
So, so exactly. try to, I use the word challenge all the time. You do? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah Instead yeah, of a problem or anything else that's, you know. A challenge. It means you're, you're going to. It's a challenge. Okay. You know so, what I say too, uh, Barry, is, is it's, it's, it's literally spiritual fitness training because it's called resistance training. you got to challenge and you're resisting. You're pushing mm-hmm. back, but in the, in the manly, a masculine gentleman, you know, way. And, and, and so you're, you're put to the test and how am I going to handle this? You know, mm-hmm. am I going to get in the fetal position? Am I going to, you know, have a temper tantrum or am I going to do this well? And and so it's, 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 it's I call it, that uh, resistance training. It's, in the the spiritual vir- life. it's the virtue of fortitude. And I know Doug knows this too. Is like when I pedal my bicycle across the United States, or I always have pedal the Molokai channel here, 31 mile, very treacherous channel between island of Molokai and Oahu. But every year I would set a, 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 a physical challenge, but I knew doing that would cause me to grow from the outside in. Because like when I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, everyone knows who's done stuff like that. It is not a physical, it is not a physical challenge. It's a mental, it's a, it's a challenge of your own will. Right. You know, it's, it's, and so you can build Coraggio, you can build the virtue of fortitude by taking on challenges, going back to what Doug was saying about fitness. A physical fit person is someone you might have, unless they're kind of like in love with themselves, someone who's physically fit is probably also disciplined in other areas of their lives too. Yes. And so that, that, that mm-hmm. testing yourself in physical situations, whatever it might be, um, is a great way to grow fortitude. Or just make a lot of dumb decisions, you know. Yeah, that, that yeah. that'll teach you fortitude, also. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Barrett, we're getting close to the end, and and is there any like if you could sum up what advice you would give to men? I mean, we hit some good points here about getting guys together, having the group sessions, you know, whether it's something physical, whether it's you know uh, martial arts or weightlifting, or you know maybe you're hiking, maybe you're 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 building something, you're doing some project, you're, or you're just sitting around and you're smoking a cigar and having a split glass. Wood, split whiskey. wood. Yeah. Split so wood. It, what, what, other, what would you give out like, to, like top priority sort of things, actionable things that people can do to accomplish really what the goal of your new book is uh, titled here, where have all the cowboys gone that you're trying to get across with that book? What are some top things you recommend they do? Number one, uh, become a Packer fan. Hey, nice. Uh, yes. Like yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're yeah. gonna be on you're gonna be on the show every week now. Father yep. wants you on the show every week. Yeah, people don't know we were talking about that before the show. But I, I think the number one thing I think people can do is that a lot of this book too is 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 this four cardinal virtues just played out different ways. Although we talk about the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. But I think the number one thing is to distill your thoughts down to a creed and then a code. Like my creed is the most radical quest you can have in life is to abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. David had, had a creed. One thing I ask for, one, that shall I seek after, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and to inquire in his temple. Uh, and so my, my boyhood hero here, um, Duke Hanamoku, he <clears> said, <throat> aloha means love. And I, I, I give aloha to everyone I meet. That is what I do and that is my creed. And so uh, find a one sentence creed and then write down what would be your 12, your two, three, four, 12 rules, your code. I'm a Benedictine Oblate. You know, the, the rules of, 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 of St. Benedict were there for a reason. Uh, having a code that you live by. So write your creed. And I recommend the way you do it is first you go out for a physical test of some sort. Maybe you go skydiving or maybe you go for a long hike that you didn't think you could do. Then you find yourself on the edge of a, you know, top of a mountain or the edge of a reef because because God God speaks more clearly to us when we're kind of on the edge. Mm. And, and then sit down and ask God to help you and write down what is it I stand for and what are the 10 rules that I, that I want to live by. Nice. Clarify that and then put them on your wall. That's good. Nice. That's good. Good well, stuff. Bear, thank you so much. Uh, this is this is great, and I can't wait for your book. Yeah. Uh, Where have all the cowboys gone? Uh, people look for it, and then you can see the books that uh, Bear has written in the links below. 
uh, w- w- this is so so needed in our times. Where they all went, where have all, all went, the cowboys gone? They all went to West Texas. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> where Doug is? Yeah. East, uh, East, East, East Texas. Oh, oh you're East in East Texas. Texas. Yeah, yeah. I, I oh. always want to think West. Yeah, Texas. so they went to West Texas. Yeah, because they're so manly. So they all. Went, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Bear, and uh, hope to have you on again soon. Yeah. All right, let's end with hope. a prayer. In the name okay. of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Thanks amen. so much, Bear. Thanks, Aloha. Bear. All right. Aloha. Aloha.